We're in the midst of a black culture renaissance in media right now. Black Panther went on to set a superhero record of five weeks leading the box office and going to become one of the largest superhero domestic box office ever. All that wonderful Wakanda hair? Well, this film might have the largest showcase of natural hair on screen ever. Natural hair is finally having its moment on the big screen and on the small screen in TV shows like Insecure and Grownish. Black women have been rocking their natural styles like this since, well, forever, and Hollywood is finally taking notice. In this episode of Maine, we're going to discuss the impact of the natural hair movement and the long road to acceptance in Hollywood. And joining me today are Renee, Mackenzie, and Sharice. Hi. Hi. I'm Mackenzie, I'm 26. I'm a natural hair and beauty YouTuber. So I make videos on how I style my hair and just trying different products, et cetera. And then I'm also a online content creator and digital um, ghostwriter. Ah, Charisse, you just recently went natural. We do want us to know about you. I was born here, but I was raised in Guyana in South America. My family's Guyanese. Is natural hair big in Guyana? Sort of, now with this new movement coming along, it made its way there slowly but surely. And Renee? I was born in Trinidad. I'm a mom of two. Mm -hmm. Hair has been like my work. It's also been my study, right? There's a lot that goes into hair moisturization. OK, so let's talk about hair moments in history. 1963, Cicely Tyson is uh, the first woman on camera to be seen with cornrows in East Side, West Side. Perhaps we've been natural on camera longer than we realized, but it wasn't something to be taken note of, perhaps until like the civil rights movement and now with a new wave of like black natural hair movement. Do you think that we've been natural on TV? I feel like we've made pop-up appearances, right? Like Nina Simone wore like an afro for a, a while. Um, and then you had Cicely. But I remember growing up feeling like natural hair was for adolescents. And then when you grew up, you had to relax your hair. When you wanted to become a Claire Huxtable, you had to relax your hair. It's 1971. We have Melba Tolliver, who is a correspondent for ABC News. So she's covering Trisha Nixon's wedding. Apparently, Melba was always wigged, all right? Melba snatches her wig off and covers <laughs> the entire wedding wigless. Yes, Melba. Right. <laughs> and what happens to Melba? Melba was coincidentally fired because of it. We're still having these, these discussions about, can I wear my fro on my job interview? So for her to say, I'm covering this majorly publicized event and I'm gonna do it as me, I think courageous is the first word that I think of. I always appreciated Pam Greer putting her sexuality forward with a fro. When you think of Pam Greer, you're immediately brought back to the hair-stealing scene of Foxy Brown, of her whipping out her hidden gun from her fro. That shit was iconic. To me, what's so important was that she was received as sexy with her natural hair. Tracy Ellis Ross, like now a hair con. That is my new word for hair icon. She has been killing natural hair looks since 2000. I live for what girlfriends did in terms of representation of black women. Black women can exist in many different types and forms, many different hairstyles, many different lifestyle choices. Just everyone would just live in their best black lives. And I'm like, yes, I'm here for it. Yara Shahidi on Blackish and Grownish. I feel like the texture of Yara's hair is what we consider to be acceptable and what many women strive for when yes. we're talking about natural hair. So is it fair to say that it's almost easy for her to wear her hair on camera versus someone who, like our girl Melba, who had a tight, tight fro? We're still hiding the fours and still trying to deliver the threes. And so it's just kind of like, but it's an improvement from the relaxer, totally. for sure but it's still more palatable, like what Yara has and what Tracy Ellis Ross has. The reception to Yara's hair, to the reception of Viola Davis's hair when she mm. snatched the wig on, mm -hmm. people were almost appalled. Like, clear distinction between, yeah, go girl, liberate yourself, and then like, what is she doing what on TV doing? like this? But totally. no one's really condemning Yara for like, wearing her hair out. But there's something that's really attractive to me about Issa Rae and how she has a different, like her braided styles are so ornate. Like she stands out to me as somebody from a tighter, kinkier uh, hair pattern that's really killing it on TV right now. We can't have this conversation without talking about the, the cultural impact of what Black Panther did in terms of visibility on screen. 
It showed almost like Afro-futuristic hairstyles. Like it wasn't just like regular box braids or just like a shaved head. Shuri's braided styles, mm -hmm. they die for them. Yeah. They were so intricate. Mm -hmm. It was just super cool to see natural hair twisted in that way. Yeah. Black Panther was such a moment because it was like, this is for us. Like, we're in Wakanda, this is for us. There might be a couple non-Black characters, but they're peripheral, right? Um, and so it's just like, we're seeing our skin, we're seeing our hair, we're seeing all of this and all of its glory. But it's also like, do we see that 4C in a show where it's not about, where it's not for us necessarily, explicitly. When we'll really see that things are starting to change is, can we have scandal where Olivia Pope doesn't have a press? Mm -hmm. Like, you know, can she have a 4C Afro? Yeah. The context is these black families, you have black friends and that's just not, that's not our world, you know? Like, right. the majority is still predominantly white. Mm -hmm. Like, if I go to a family reunion, I'm gonna, I, my hair could be whatever. Mm -hmm. And I feel like my family would be like, oh, cute. Yeah. But I like if I'm walking out of my house, I different audience. Mm -hmm. And so like how I'm perceived matters to all of us. Yeah. And so like what would be nice is if, you know, like a newscaster just decides like Melba to be like, we're gonna we're gonna wear it natural. Totally. Because ain't nobody firing you today for right. that. So the question of the day. You know, we've gone over history. We've given our personal testimonies. Do we think that natural hair and the representation of natural hair has changed over time? And if so, how? The most uh, visible way would be in terms of visibility. The fact that it's there in all its different types. You can do whatever you want to it. You can be a superhero with box braids. You can be a working professional with your hair pressed or with a wash and go. There's like so many different ways that Black people with their natural hair can thrive and survive in society. There's no one uniform narrative for us. But I would say that like social media, I think, is a blessing and a curse. But I think social media is really, really helpful in terms of like broadening our perceptions and our visibility of all different textures. That's where I kind of see the full spectrum of celebration of all styles. I think on TV we see a lot more natural hair, but it's still a lot. Tracy Ellis and Yara, and their hair is beautiful, but I still don't really think we see so much of our, our kinkier, you know. Our diverse. Hair. Yeah, I don't think, I think there's a lot more room for growth in that um, arena. And so that's why I think like Black Panther and all those are great because, because those are for us, you see, you get a heavy dose every time. <laughs> but I would like to see it be like, you know, on regular, on regular t television a shows. Dash here yeah, and there. you know. Dash everywhere. Yeah, like. It's always in Black movies or shows where these things and looks are celebrated. And so to like agree with Mackenzie, I feel like it does have a long way to go yet mm -hmm. um, so that it's everywhere. It's not just in a TV or a show, it's on the news station. It's right. on, I don't know, all kinds of coverage. Like when you click on your TV, you see a black girl, you see like a natural hairdo or like um, it's just, yeah. I think I would, celebrate the day where this conversation was had and it wasn't just a group of black women. Mm -hmm. Ignorance is what stops people from learning, right? Mm -hmm. And so a lot of people get comfortable within their ignorance and I think if we had more open dialogue, if there was more curiosity from other cultures and the people who were putting people on camera yeah. and on the big screen, uh, then we would find ourselves in a vastly much different place. It's about changing who's in front of the camera, who's changing who's behind the camera, and also who's making the decisions for both. I think that's, that's what's happening in social media, and that's what's happening on TV, just more of a conversation. And like, white girls are learning. Like, white girls are learning about our hair textures, and I think that they can identify a loose curl and a tighter curl, like, <laughs> because, and then some of these questions are embarrassing for them to ask. They're like, sure. oh shoot, I don't know that. So they'll go and they'll YouTube it and they're learning in their homes and their privacy, but right. like they're becoming more informed. And also I believe that we are becoming more informed to inform them. And I think it's it's getting there. It's a process, but it's it's certainly getting there. Most definitely. Yeah. Thanks, y'all. <laughs>